we're going to be looking at Newton's three laws of motion. Newton's first law of motion states that every object will remain at rest or continue to move at a constant velocity unless acted on by a resultant force. So in this example animation, there's no force acting on the ladder that's on top of the truck and so it continues to move forward. An object resists changes in its motion due to the fact that it has mass and we say mass is an inertial property of an object and inertia meaning resistance to changes in motion. An application of Newton's first law of motion is passengers lurching forward when a train stops and that's because they continue in their state of motion because there's no force acting on them. The braking force acts on the train to stop the train but it doesn't act on the passengers so the passengers continue to move forward. In order for the passengers to stop them they must exert a force on the train and they do that by either pressing down on the floor of the train or by holding on to the handles. And for this very reason, that's why you have seat belts in cars to prevent the driver or passengers from moving forward when the braking force is applied on the car. Newton's second law of motion states that the resultant force acting on an object is equal to the rate of change of its momentum. And we can express this mathematically like this. So delta meaning the change, P is our momentum. So the change in momentum divided by the change in time, our rate of change in momentum. It's important to note that the change in momentum is in the same direction as the resultant force. F equals MA is a special case of Newton's second law of motion. Momentum is mass times velocity. So if we substitute that for, for P momentum into the equation for resultant force, we get force is equal to the change in MV divided by the time taken. As we're assuming mass is constant for our object, so as that doesn't change, we can take it out of the brackets. So that will leave us with m equals delta v divided by delta t. And that is representing the rate of change of velocity, which is equal to our acceleration. So that means f will equal ma when mass is constant. And if you remember, when objects approach, have velocities that approach the speed of light, mass is not constant, and so F equals MA is not valid. But this equation of resultant force equal to the rate of change momentum will always be valid. Newton's third law of motion states that if object A exerts a force on object B, then object B will exert an equal and opposite force on object A. So for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. The action in this case is object A exerting a force on object B. And so the reaction force is object B exerting the equal and opposite force on object A. Here you have two trolleys that are stationary. And one trolley has a plunger, which you can release if you hit on the trolley. So if the plunger is released, what will happen next? So trolley A, which has the plunger released, will exert a force, forward force on trolley B. And from Newton's third law of motion, trolley B will then exert a backward force on trolley A. 
So the trolleys will move in opposite directions. And if the trolleys have the same mass, they will have the same accelerations and so will cover the same distance. An application of Newton's third law of motion is how the driving wheels of a car generates a motive force. The engine of the car provides a torque, a turning force on the axle or wheels of the tyre. The tyres exert a backwards force on the road and from Newton's third law of motion then the road will exert a forward force on the tyres. And it is this forward force on the tyres that is producing the motive force that accelerates the car. It's important to note for Newton's action-reaction pair of forces that they are of the same type. They act on the two different objects. So one force is acting on object A, the other force is acting on object B. The forces are equal in magnitude but in opposite directions. If we consider a book resting on a table and if we look at the action reaction pair of forces acting on it, if we first consider the weight of the book, so that is the gravitational force acting on it due to Earth, the equal and opposite force would be then the gravitational force the book exerts on Earth. These forces then are the same type in that they're both gravitational forces. They are acting on two different objects because one of the gravitational forces is acting on the book and the other gravitational force is acting on the Earth. They are equal in size and yes, they're opposite in direction. So these two forces are obeying the four rules for the action-reaction pair of forces. We'll now consider the second action-reaction pair of forces acting on the book. And that is the normal reaction force between the book and the table. The table exerts a normal reaction force on the book, which is vertically upwards. The book exerts a normal reaction force on the table, which is vertically downwards. These two forces are of the same type in that they are normal reaction forces. And yes, they're acting on two different objects. One of the normal reaction forces acting on the book and the other is acting on the table. They are both equal in size and in opposite in direction. And so these two forces are obeying the four rules needed for the action reaction pair of forces for Newton's third law of motion. Therefore, it's important to note that the normal reaction force and weight are not an action reaction pair of forces from Newton's third law of motion. They're not of the same type. One is a gravitational force and one is a normal reaction force. They're not acting on two different objects. They're acting on one object and that is the book. But yes, they're equal in size and opposite in direction, but because they're not satisfying the first two rules. They're not an action-reaction pair of forces.